question, Senator. And with that, I would. Uh, uh, but these are not on their budget now. Uh, I think the time has expired. Thank you very much. Senator Schmidt, and I'd like Senator Rosen will uh, preside as I go to the Appropriations Committee. Senator thank, Schmidt, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and I want to thank you both for being here. I would note to the committee that both of these witnesses have Missouri ties. So, um, and Missouri roots. It's uh, my belief, and I've talked about a little bit in this, in this committee before, that, that too few people, quite frankly, understand uh, the urgency, the gravity, and the proximity of the threat that the PRC, China, poses to the United States of America. Um, they are rapid development as, you know, being a militarized power now, and um, projecting that power is very real. And it's that proximity that I want to ask both of you separate questions about, uh, given your, your, um, uh, your roles. The Belt and Road Initiative, clearly is, a, um, is an initiative to further their economic, militaristic, and political goals. And the dual use that they get out of this once they're involved with these countries is, is very real. And so, uh, General Richardson, I wanted to ask you that it, it seems to me that they're gaining, China's gaining far too much traction in the Western Hemisphere if we sort of look at this under the old Monroe Doctrine um, in, in the Western Hemisphere. They uh, continually abuse not just the, the debt traps that are established, but they abuse those agreements to then later expand militarily. Could you talk about a couple of those examples that you see? And if you were, and this is sort of, uh, Senator Scott, I think, has had a great line of questioning um, uh, about how we can better explain to our folks back home the real risks. So from your perspective, a couple of examples that you would want to highlight that raise real concerns for you in, in, your, in the Western Hemisphere. So that Belt and Road Initiative, Senator, that you talk about, that's really the, the guise or the disguise of uh, how I see that the PRC gets their foot in the door to expand and uh, a lot of these projects into the critical infrastructure for the partner nations. And so when you're talking deep water ports in 17 countries, the telecommunications, the 5G, 5G backbone in five of the countries, 24 countries having the, the PRC, uh, 3G or 4G, and I worry about that. The stealing of information, there have been numerous cyber attacks of our uh, partner nations in the region. And uh, you have a communist nation that doesn't respect the human rights of their own people uh, 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 with Huawei and ZTE um, and fostering this out to all of the other partner nations across the globe, not just in my region. Uh, so they don't respect the human rights of their own people. They're not going to respect the human rights of every other nation. And so that's a huge concern in terms of the uh, telecommunications. The space, space infrastructure, 11, uh, 11 space-enabling infrastructure sites in five countries in the region as well. So it's very, very concerning, especially with the dual use uh, that they, they come in. They're state-owned enterprises from the PRC, which means that they can be used for ap uh, military application at a later date if needed. Or wanted, um, General Van Herc. Um, you know we, we've we've talked about before in, in classified briefings here, in, in in previous settings about the Chinese spy balloon, you know, fiasco, and and, and showed um, how brazen the 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 Chinese Communist Party is willing to be to gain intelligence. Um, I think that opened the eyes of a lot of Americans um, of just how. Uh, again, how brazen they were, but one obvious concern is that they won't just send a spy balloon, right? There'll be something else, and you've talked about awareness. What are specifically a couple of things that this committee can do to help with that? We, we need to continue to accelerate domain awareness uh, capabilities. The, the department has done a good job with recognizing my domain awareness capability gaps, which includes funding over the horizon radar, but we need to think differently about how we field capabilities in a more timely and rapid manner using uh, digital technology we have today vice industrial age processes. And you can help with encouraging that and moving forward with that and also encouraging testing, development, and when there are failures, uh, let's not stop everything. Let's move forward more quickly to the field and, and rapidly develop capabilities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Peters, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, General Van Herc, uh, 
I would like to, uh, to build on uh, the concerns you mentioned in your earlier testimony regarding uh, cyber attacks uh, here in